and welcome to this video. I'd like to go over how to make this brush. Uh, this is a third way of doing it uh, in contrast to the past two ways. This utilizes a surface uh, curve that is equation driven. This is a technique that is very advantageous in a few ways. First, it allows us to determine the number of bristles that we want uh, with just typing a number, and it will automatically update that without any bristles spilling over the surface like we've seen in past examples that we've had to delete those bodies from. Likewise, this um, uses a pattern that is more circular. If I pull up an image of a brush, you can see that these bristles are in a circular pattern, not in a straight XY pattern, whereas both of our um, techniques of doing it previously were in straight XY patterns. So there's a number of advantages. Some of the disadvantages are this is complex and you have to have probably some mathematical knowledge to be able to manipulate equations as needed. Likewise, this is a little bit hardware heavy. I don't think that uh, it's a deal breaker if you've got weak hardware, but it will just take a little bit longer. So even though this is more complex, I think there's some great advantages to it. You can see our bristles are much more realistic looking. Uh, so let's get to the example. I'm going to open a new part. And just like in our previous videos, I will uh, get sketching on the top plane. And I'll start with a four by six ellipse as usual. Now I can refresh and uh, I've got this outline of what my surface uh, boundary will be. And that will be advantageous when I go to create my curve. And I can do that by uh, choosing the spline drop down menu and equation driven curve. I'll make this curve on my top plane. From here, I'll choose parametric instead of explicit, and I'll do my equation something like negative 0.04 times t times cosine of, and I'll go 1 times t. Likewise, um, I'll do negative 0 0.06 times t times sine of 1 times t. And my parameters will go something like 0 to 50. And there I've generated a curve that fits this quite well. I can um, manipulate this curve in several ways, one of which being um, I can change this first number. And this these two numbers, 0 0.4 and 0 0.06, are because I made a 6 by 4 ellipse. And so I knew that if I added 0 0.04 and 0 0.06, it would force the curve to be proportional to the ellipse that I've drawn. And that's how I can make it instead of a perfect circle. If I make, if I make this 0 0.06, notice it flattens out to a perfect circle. Likewise, I can be made uh, a lot more narrow by doing 0 0.02. Once SolidWorks is done thinking about this, you'll see it update to be much narrower than the ellipse that I have. So I'll update this again to 0 0.06 or 0 0.04 rather. Uh, so um, you can adjust you know, how eccentric you are simply by uh, changing these first two numbers. I can change the inside number of what is nested in the cosine function. If I make that 2 and I make my sine 2, uh, these no the inside numbers have to be the same. Notice I get twice as many um, revolutions. So the number of revolutions are your uh, cosine function. So I always explicitly state 1 times t because it makes it easier to change that number when I go to edit. I can move the curve itself by simply saying plus one and I move one inch over in my x direction and I can say plus one to move one inch up in my y direction. So that's a valuable tool as well. You can also add in the exponential functions on this involving t to make an exponential sort of logarithmic curve if that is desirable. I'll uh, adjust this by saying something like 48. No, no, that's not enough. 
Maybe I'll choose uh, 49. That looks about right. So from 0 to 49, we have these equations, and I'll accept that, and we've generated a curve. And it will take SolidWorks just a minute to think about actually generating the curve from this equation. All right. Um, I've got my front plane, which I will grab and put a sketch on. First, I have to exit my sketch and sketch on my front plane. And with a three-point arc, I'll connect these two and give it a radius of, as always, three. Now I'll go to my right plane. Select my midpoint and pierce. Now I can build a surface. So I'll go surfaces, filled surface, I'll make this my boundary, and I'll make these two my constraints. And now we've built a surface. I can choose this edge and fill a surface on there, and then simply knit while creating a solid and merging. So now I'm dealing with a solid instead of a surface. Can see I'm solid all the way through. And what I'm going to do is project my equation driven curve onto my surface. And to do that, I'll say tools, or rather insert, curve, projected. I'll choose my curve and choose my face. And now my curve is on that face. So I'm going to uh, get onto my front plane and create a sketch. And I'm going to sketch out a bristle. Of course, that uh, went in the wrong direction. I wonder if anybody else has that happen as well. Make sure I am tangent to vertical and make my arc center vertical with my arc end. And create a second line and merge these points together. Make sure that this is vertical. And now I can make this vertical on my origin. I'll make this coincident onto the surface as this. And now I can ascribe some dimensions. I'll make this, say, three quarters of an inch tall. We'll give this a radius of, say, 40 thou, about a millimeter. And we'll give these lines a width of 10 thou. Now, uh, to avoid a zero thickness error, which will most assuredly happen if I just put a three point arc right there, I will make sure that this goes about 5 thou below the surface. And that will stop any zero thicknesses from happening. I'm going to insert a revolved feature from the sketch that I've just made. And now we're ready to pattern. Perhaps for the fun of it, I will add an appearance before I do so on my part. And let's go with the medium gloss, maybe yellow. I haven't made one in yellow yet. And then on this face, I will add probably a medium gloss black. Okay, let's pattern by uh, coming to our pattern drop down and saying curve driven pattern. In our direction, I choose my spiral. Upon the face, I choose the part that I just made black. 
And then in my features and faces, we will not be modeling this as a body. We will be modeling this simply as a feature or a face. Choose this revolve, and there we go. I, I gave it a quantity of 150. That was a little bit fast for you watching that. So I did 150, and now I can hide my spiral. And I've got my brush. I'll go to my top plane and start a sketch. And this will just simply finish off the body of the brush. As in the other videos, I'll choose an ellipse. And we'll make this dimension to something like 7 inches by 5 inches. And then we can orient the end to be vertical with our origin. And add in a three-point arc to which we can make tangent. And another three-point arc to which we can also make tangent. Actually, I think I'll mirror. <laughs> I'll choose another three-point arc, add in the tangent relation. We'll make this center something like seven inches away and give this a vertical relation between all three points. We'll make this a radius of 1.5. We'll give this a radius of something like 4. Doesn't look too bad. We'll do a center line. And we'll do a mirror here, here, and here. And we'll finish off with a power trim coming off these two. And now I can run an extrusion to be one inch in the other direction. And add a fillet that would be half inch in radius. And we've got a simple brush. So hope this video was helpful. Again, Using an equation-driven pattern can be a little bit hardware-intensive. Even if you're running a small processor, it will happen. Just be patient. Let it sit and think, um, and it'll come. So don't be discouraged if it takes a long time. Just keep waiting. It will happen. I've done huge patterns on small hardware, much worse than this. It's worked every time. Uh, so again, please subscribe if this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.